Hi, everybody. So quite a few of you have been messaging me saying, am I going to continue Cut the Kibble? And I think part of it is because I posted an IG story last night, how to make a dairy-free ice cream for yourself. It was a dairy-free coffee ice cream. And yeah, that's for humans, not for dogs. Um, though it could be. Um, it actually could be. But I want to say that, yeah, I want to share some of my human stories because, hey, I'm not going to be cooking for a dog because Bella's gone, but I am continuing Cut the Kibble. And um, I'm going to be doing so much research. Uh, the day that I came home with Bella's ashes, there was something in my mailbox and it just... It just uh, has a, some kind of a meaning to me. Let me back up and tell you that in November, I interviewed an author, Diana Laverdu Donez, who was in the process of, at the tail end of writing a book called The Plant Power Dog. And I interviewed her because I know that several of my clients, their dogs just don't do well on animal protein. And I didn't know what to offer them because, you know, dogs need meat, right? Dogs need animal protein. That's what we have been taught all these years. Um, anyway, I wanted to interview her to, to learn about her. She's a, a canine nutritionist. And uh, she said that she was going to send me her book once it was published. And it came out um, in Amazon a few weeks ago. And uh, I waited. And the day that I came home with Bella's ashes, this is what I got in the mailbox. And she sent it to me. Now, I want you to look at this book, first of all. It's called, what's it called? The Plant Powered Dog. It's, it's about dogs eating vegan. Now, before you all come at me and say, dogs should eat meat, I want you to look at this very closely. Do you see where it says, with Jean Dobbs? Do you see that? Do you all know who Jean, Dr. Jean Dobbs is? She is the pioneer of veterinarians back in like 1964 okay she everybody holds her up on a pedestal even all these holistic vets that you listen to on social media hold her up on a pedestal and here she is on the cover that's her name dr jean dobbs for a book that is talking about why you should feed your dog a vegan diet. You know, <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to be doing on Cut the Kibble. I'm going to just be researching it. You know, you need to have an open mind. Uh, I have some other vets that I hold very high on a pedestal. I'm not going to mention names, but they are stuck in their ways. You know, you can't be stuck in your ways. You need to be open-minded. I keep on telling you that canine nutrition is fluid, and so is human nutrition, okay? You know, it used to be that vegetable oils were very healthy, and now we know that they're very highly inflammatory, okay? You should not be having seed oils. But back in the 60s, the companies were pushing the vegetable oils and they got together with the American Heart Association. And they said that vegetable oils are good for your heart. And now we know that's wrong. But we need to be open-minded and do research. And I'd like to share with you just like, I'm a slow reader, okay? Uh, and I got these markers here and I'm gonna be, I came out here this morning, it was a beautiful morning. And instead of in the morning looking at my phone through Instagram and TikTok, whatever, I'm going to be reading because I'm bet my mind is best in the morning for reading. But anyway, what I'd like to be sharing with you throughout 
you know, the days and weeks and months ahead are tidbits of what I am learning and what makes sense to me, okay? And I'm also going to be doing research on uh, toxins with the liver and, and, and things to help you with your dog uh, with products that may be good. But, you know, there's something called bioaccumulations. What does that mean? That's the buildup of toxins in the fatty tissues. And it doesn't happen overnight. It's bioaccumulations. It accumulates over the years. And even though I did the best to feed Bella, I was still feeding her meat, all right? The last three years of her life, she did get grass-fed, grass-finished. At times, she did get the liver, always, but I didn't always buy grass-fed, grass-finished. But think about it. You've heard about the, the food chain, okay? So the lowest on the food chain is plants. That's gonna have the lowest toxins. Yes, some of them are sprayed with toxins. I haven't got, in pesticides, I haven't gotten that part of the book. I'm gonna share everything with you. But then the smaller animals eat the plants and then the bigger animals eat the, the smaller animals and they're getting the most toxins. And you're gonna say, well, cows don't eat animals. That's true, they don't, but they're filled with tons of toxins. I know I have it in here somewhere, you know, the hormones and um, uh, antibiotics and filled with the environmental chemicals of the fluoride and the chlorine from the water that the animal is drinking, the heavy metals, um, pollutants and dioxides, pesticides. They have the most of it because they're the biggest on the food chain. And then we feed that to our little dogs. I keep on saying how our dogs are so small and we're feeding them this stuff that has the most toxins in it. So it kind of makes sense, you know, to feed your dog a plant-based diet. Now you're gonna tell me that dogs are carnivores, they're not. They're omnivores, okay? The pet industry has been brainwashing everybody that they are carnivores. We're gonna get into that more. And I just heard a vet that I highly hold on a pedestal <laughs> say the other day, cause she was talking about um, dogs with cancer. And she said, you have to feed dogs with cancer a meat-based diet. Well, then why do you have Dr. Jean Dobbs on here. Her name is on this book saying, feed your dog a plant-based diet. Think about it and I'll get back to you.